want to talk to everyone about how to prevent cancer, but I want you to know that this lecture I could give to the Diabetic Association, I could give to the Heart Association or the Stroke Association because these chronic diseases and cancer are incredibly common. And the good common sense that we're going to learn about today will help you reduce all sorts of chronic diseases. Number one is heart disease and stroke. Vascular disease is actually still the number one killer by a percentage point above number two, cancer. Cancer is the number two killer of Singaporeans. Anyone guess what number three is? Any guesses? Stroke. No, stroke's part of number one. How about accidents? <laughs> really? It's the number three cause of death in Singapore. Be, wear your seatbelt. Be watch where, you, where the bus is going. Don't get in front of the bus because the drivers are not always so concerned with the pedestrians these days. Number four, infections. Infections are still a modern problem and we need to do more than just wash our hands. And as you'll see tonight, some infections are associated with cancer. So what about cancer in Singapore? Well, in Singapore, these are the numbers, the cancer cases for men and women between 1968 and 2007 in five-year blocks. And the pink or red color here are the women and the blue are the men. The cancer rates for women are going up every year. Now the cancer rates for men have come down a little bit but there's still more cancer in men than there is in women in Singapore. And probably a lot of that is due to lung cancer because men historically smoked more often than women and then men got the message to smoke less. Although as you might have seen in the paper in the last week the number of smokers in Singapore went up in the last uh, census compared to prior periods. So we're not getting the message across strongly. So these are the cancers in men. These are the top 10 cancers in men in Singapore. Number one, colon. Number two, lung cancer. Number three, prostate cancer. And number four is liver cancer. One of the things that always strikes me about this, in my opinion, these are mostly preventable cancers. Lung cancer predominantly occurs in smokers. If you're going to smoke, the odds are you're going to get lung cancer. Flip that around, if you have lung cancer, the odds are 90% you were a smoker at one point. 22,000 deaths from cancer in men in the last five-year reporting period. What about women? Well, breast cancer trumps everything. It is the most common cancer in women in Singapore and it is significantly more common than colon or lung. In fact, there are more cases of breast cancer than there are colon and lung cancer combined. All right? 23,000 deaths in women from breast cancer. <coughs> And if breast cancer makes up 30% of those deaths, you're looking at almost 8,000 deaths from breast cancer in a five-year period. Now this is a trend line looking at those same diseases. And the big one right here, well this is breast cancer. This is 1968, about 20 cases per 100,000. And here, 1990, maybe 40 cases per 100,000. And now, 2007, we've got about 60 cases per 100,000. Up, up, up. For men, lung cancer has been going down. That's nice to see. And that's why the numbers have been going down for men in general. But here's something that I see every day. This little blue line right here, this is prostate cancer. And even though it looks like it's low on the graph, it is the most rapidly growing cancer in Singapore. So there are more new cases of prostate cancer than there are of any other solid tumors. <coughs> prostate cancer, for the most part, has been unheard of in Asia. So why should it suddenly be going up now? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with importing Western lifestyle. 
So here's a little painful summary slide. One in four Singaporeans will die of cancer. There are 12 Singaporeans dying from cancer every day. And there's one Singaporean being diagnosed with cancer every hour of every day. So how are we going to fix this? How do you fight cancer? Well, let's start with how I'm not going to fight cancer. All right? The future of cancer care, it's not in fancy, expensive medications. The future of cancer treatment is not in fancy radiation machines. And the future of cancer treatment is not expensive robotic surgeries. All right? We need our chemo and our radiation and our surgeries to fight cancer, I know. But the really the best way to fight cancer is to treat the cause, not the disease. Prevent the cancer from happening in the first place. So I've got a little pie chart here. And it says that 10% of cancer is due to genes, DNA, inherited. But the other 90% is due to what I call environment. Now that's not the environment like global warming. It's not the environment like you live next to a nuclear power plant. I'm talking about the environment you create right around you. The environment of eating poorly, of not being active or not exercising, smoking, becoming overweight, all right? That kind of environment, your internal environment, is the most common cause. Now I know most people, I have a lot of patients who come in and say a woman with breast cancer comes in or she's just been told she has breast cancer, she's going to look up to the sky and she's going to say, God, why me? And I had a patient teach me, no, that's the wrong thing to say. Because this patient was very intuitive. She looked up and she said, why not? And she knew she hadn't done anything to protect herself. So I ask you, what have you done to cancer-proof your body? What have you done to help yourself live a healthier life? And I'm going to give you my prescription for doing that today. A lot of people don't believe what I just told you. They want to believe it's the genes. They want to believe they got it from auntie, that they got it from their father, that everyone in the family has a cancer. Well, there are some inherited cancers, but they're actually quite uncommon. And here's one of the reasons why I know that this cancer phenomenon, this modern disease, is not from the DNA. In this room, we have men and women we have Asians, we have Indians, we have an occasional Caucasian. We are from different ethnicities and genders. And yet, we are 99.4% identical at the level of DNA. And in fact, going back 10,000 years, we have been identical in DNA. So nothing changed in our DNA in the last few years, but the cancer rates are going up in one single lifetime. For example, there is a gene that causes breast cancer in, a f in families, the one I'm talking about 10% of the time. And if you have that gene today, then your lifetime risk of getting breast cancer is about 80%. But if you were in that exact same family in 1940, your chance of getting breast cancer would be about 25%. So what changed? Let me give you an analogy. If that gene is like carrying a water bottle filled with gasoline, and maybe every summer it gets hot and you worry if your water bottle is going to blow up, OK? That's what it was like in 1940. And 25% of the time, the bottle blew up and caught fire. But now the bottle blows up 82% of the time. What changed?